So we are very happy to swing back to profit. Obviously, this year was uh, hugely challenging. Uh, the biggest difference to last year are financial markets. So that explains about two thirds of the decline uh, compared to last year. And then the last third is the, the war in Ukraine and some uh, natural catastrophes that were a bit higher uh, than expected. But overall, on the positive side, really, uh, the death on COVID have come to the lowest level since the beginning of the pandemic. So we are very hopeful that we are entering an endemic stage. And then the overall pricing environment has uh, remained very stable. Uh, and the capitalization of the group is uh, higher than ever. We're above our target range. So we're very uh, strong here. And, and, and that's the kind of times we're here for, basically, as a reinsurer. Yeah. And, and Christian, look, I, I know a little bit about your industry, but nowhere near enough. And, and I know that actually uh, extreme events, whether they be weather or some other form of catastrophe, are often followed, of course, by sustained periods of higher premiums. And as such, you can offset the short-term declines over a longer term as well. But we seem to have relentless events at the moment as well, uh, both with the war and indeed with weather events. We look at what's going on in Spain, in Portugal, uh, and even with drought conditions in areas such as Utah, such as United Kingdom, and terrible weather events in, in Mandy's home country, in, in uh, East, uh, West, uh, one, Eastern Australia as well. So, Christian, is the relentless nature of the changes we're seeing actually affecting the ability to keep premiums high? You know, there's complete consensus in the scientific community, and we ourselves have about 30 scientists for, for more than 30 years who, who developed these models, that some of these perils have changed. Uh, the, the, the loss frequency, severity has increased, in particular in, uh, in natural catastrophes such as uh, the hail, the droughts, the fire, etc. So climate change is definitely here. We can see it every day. And of course, we, we keep on increasing rates to adapt to this uh, new environment. And we believe we're well placed to do that uh, because we have all this uh, knowledge. Uh, to put it into perspective, the overall expected loss for Swiss Re for the full year is $1.9 billion. And so far, we have uh, $900 billion uh, that were used up by the first half of the year. Now, that's a bit above what was expected. The first half of the year, we expect less losses, so $700 million. Uh, but still, you know, you, you get the sense of the, the size of everything and, and our ability to absorb uh, these large uh, NACATs. But you need a strong balance sheet. You need a very strong diversification across the whole world uh, to be able to, to write that business. I mean, certainly going hand in hand with trying to combat some of these uh, increasingly frequent extreme weather events and, uh, and, and, and in general trying to combat climate change. I see that you're not insuring new oil or gas projects from this year on, Christian. Given the fact that we're currently in a, a, a really acute energy crisis at the moment, is, is that stance up for debate to, to pause even temporarily? You see, we, we also follow very closely the International Energy Agency, which is really representing a lot of us. And, in, and, and that's the biggest experts you have in the field. And they were very clear in their statements uh, last year that we don't need new oil and gas fields if we want to achieve, and we can achieve, net zero by 2050. So we're basically following uh, that advice. Uh, whether the current situation, and, and their warning is really that if in this situation, because we start to panic, we start to develop long-term infrastructure uh, around old uh, types of energies. This puts the, the 2050 goal on the real uh, you know, pressure and it might not be possible to achieve it. So of course we will have to see how things develop, what is needed. If it's more short-term reopening of plants, I think that's more acceptable. I think what is really a challenge is opening long-term infrastructure, creating long-term infrastructure which will change the course uh, of where we are. So it's, it's a dilemma, it's a type of thing we're, we're here to, to deal with and we'll have to decide uh, if there's anything specific coming up uh, on the go.